Nigel Farage being cancelled by his own bank is a huge wake-up call as to how far the Chinese-style social credit score has advanced in the UK. But it's also a damning indictment of the media and the fact-checker industrial complex. Farage revealed that Coots had closed his account earlier this month, asserting that it was because of his political opinions. He was then rejected by at least seven other banks when trying to open a new account. The media, particularly the BBC, then lied about the reason for the account closure. Amplifying and legitimising Coote's false claim that it was because Farage had failed to meet a £1 million account threshold. Well, now we know what actually happened, and it completely venerates the veracity of Farage's initial assertion. Last year in November, top brass at Coote's met to discuss exiting Farage as a customer. They produced a 36-page dossier detailing the reasons for cancelling his account. His friendship with Donald Trump, his meeting with tennis star Novak Djokovic, his opposition to net zero and his criticism of King Charles, as well as his support for Brexit. Quote, distasteful comments made by Farage that conflicted with the bank's position on ESG diversity. The document clearly spells out that the main reason was, quote, his publicly stated views were at odds with our position as an inclusive organisation. Chief amongst Farage's sins was retweeting a Ricky Gervais joke. And, I mean, try this for size. Even when I retweeted this clip, of Ricky Gervais, which, which they describe in the report as a transphobic comedy sketch. Will you watch it? You make your minds up. The old fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. <laughs> Those <laughs> dinosaurs. Oh. No, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know, the new ones we've been seeing lately. The, the ones with beards and <laughs> They're as good as. No, it's the old-fashioned, and now the old-fashioned, they're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person isn't a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you <laughs> bigot. Well, I still think it's brilliant, and I was very happy to tweet it out. I just hope for Ricky Gervais's sake, that he doesn't bank with coots. There's also a direct admission in this dossier that, yes, Farage did in fact have enough money in his account. Quote, the client's economic contribution is now sufficient to retain on a commercial basis, which completely demolishes the BBC's claim that coots closed Farage's account for not meeting a balance threshold. Coots cancelled Farage because of his political opinions and then lied about it to the media, primarily the BBC, which swallowed this guff wholesale and then reported it as fact. The irony of this is particularly delicious since the BBC recently unveiled its Verify service, which purports to fact check and prevent the spread of misinformation. Yet they've now been caught red handed purveying one of the most egregious examples of misinformation so far this year. John Sopel, BBC reporter, arrogantly claiming Farage's account was closed because he was, quote, not rich enough for coots. Misinformation. Paul Mason, former BBC journalist, during a guest appearance on a BBC talk show claiming the account closure was due to money laundering rules. This is a complete red herring. If the, your bank account the, was closed, the, probably wouldn't be a red the, herring for no, you. This is, it's a complete red herring. What's happening is that there are international rules on money laundering. Misinformation. The BBC's Simon Jack claiming Farage fell below the financial threshold required to hold an account at Coots. Misinformation. Maybe the BBC should start verifying the garbage produced by its own journalists before pointing the finger at everyone else. <laughs>